Hi guys, welcome back to Coffee's Classroom. It is day two of our temporary school closing and I miss you guys so much. We're gonna go over our daily top 10 things to do without electronics and remember to always get parent permission first. Number one, invent a new game. List 10 things you love about yourself. Play 20 questions. Draw a picture with your eyes closed. I bet that one would be a lot of fun. Learn to do a cartwheel if you don't already know how. Try to do an impression of your favorite character. Make up your own joke. Create a new recipe. Try to name all 50 states, which sometimes is pretty difficult. And write a song. I think all of those things would be a ton of fun to do while you are at home hanging out with um, family. We are going to read a book today called... Little Dreamers, Visionary Women Around the World. Um, so this book is uh, just about all these wonderful women, all these wonderful women in the world. Oh, that's a tongue twister. Um, and so I think this book is not only beautifully illustrated, but it just has some amazing women in it for us to learn about. Um, I think this book is absolutely incredible. It's very uplifting and encouraging for all women everywhere. I think the illustrations are gorgeous. The information is amazing. Uh, it's very inspiring. And so we're going to talk about a couple different women today. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you one more thing I think would be fun for you to do uh, during the day. Um, we did our daily top 10, but I have another one. So because we're reading this book, I went ahead and created my own amazing woman. Um, and so what I did was just found some random things around my house. Um, so the, her hair is actually just made out of, um, ribbon glittery ribbon and I rolled it into circles and then glued it down um, and made this awesome hair for her. Um, I put a bow in her hair that I tied myself. Her lips are made out of red paper that I glued down. Her earrings are string that I glued down in a circle and then the top of her shirt or dress um, is another piece of fabric that I glued. So this was a lot of fun to make. I just found some things around the house. I think it turned out really cool. Um, I just was feeling really inspired by this book and I thought this would be really cool. Um, so you guys can give this a try too and you can um, use anything for hair. If you use string, it could be long hair, um, just whatever you wanna do. So I think that would be a lot of fun. And you can make guys too or characters. It doesn't have to be um, anything in particular. So we're gonna get started with Amazing Women. I'm going to show you guys some of these gorgeous illustrations because I just can't get over how wonderful this was made. But the first person we're going to talk about today is Marie Curie. She was born in 1867 and passed away in 1934. She was a physicist and a chemist from Poland, France. So it says, Marie Curie or sorry, Marie grew up in Warsaw, Poland, when most of the country was ruled by an oppressive Russian government. She graduated at 15, but there was no place for her at the all-male universities. Desperate to further her education, she attended a flying university, a secret institution where women and patriotic Poles could learn. Finally, at 24, after saving money and helping her sister get a degree, she studied at the University of Paris. She worked hard to catch up with her classmates and eventually earned degrees in both physics and mathematics. She wanted to return to Poland to teach, but was again turned away because she was a woman. She met a young scientist, Pierre, who was impressed with her and in love with her. He begged her to stay in Paris, apply for a doctorate, and marry him. And she did. In 1896, the physicist Henry Becquerel... Sorry, that's hard to say, had discovered that uranium salts emitted an odd glow, and Marie wanted to know why. She found that the glowing persisted under every condition and concluded that the source must be atomic. The atoms of uranium have an unstable nucleus, so they emit particles and release energy. She called this radioactivity. Pierre joined her research, and together they discovered two new elements, which they named polonium after her beloved homeland, Poland, and radium. In 1903, Marie, Pierre, and Henri Piquerel were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. 
1911, Marie was awarded a second Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her work further for her further work on radioactive elements, which had a lasting impact on scientific research and discoveries in medicine. She was the first person to be awarded Nobel Prizes in two different fields. Marie's list of accomplishments goes on and on. First female professor at the Sorbonne, helped prove that atoms are divisible, developed a portable x-ray device used during World War I, but along the way, she struggled to pay the bills. Still, Marie's passion kept her going, and her curiosity and unique vision led her to some of science's greatest discoveries. And that's amazing. It really goes to show that no matter what adversity you're facing, if you stay true to who you are and you want something bad enough and you work hard, you're able to get it. Um, so that really is amazing. All of these women are incredible, but I picked a couple that I wanted to read about today. The second one you may recognize is Frida Kahalo. She's a painter from Mexico. Tragedy stuck, struck Frida throughout her life, but she channeled her pain into art. As a child, Frida contracted polio and one of her legs became withered. She walked with a limp for the rest of her life, but she disguised her disfigurement with beautiful long skirts associated with traditional Tahuna clothing. At 18, she was in a bus accident and endured a long recovery process. One thing she... One thing she could do while bedridden? Paint. Her mother built an easel that hung above her hospital bed, and with nothing else to look at, Frida painted herself. Her portraits were a mix of exuberant, sad, colorful, and dark. She painted not only what she saw, but also what she felt, often using symbols to represent those feelings. Nails could mean pain, a captured deer, vulnerability. Because of this, Frida is often associated with artists of the Surrealism movement, such as Sal Salvador Dali, who painted dreamlike worlds. But Frida never considered herself a Surrealist, because she didn't paint dreams. She simply reflected all the realities she experienced and felt. As she healed, Frida joined Mexico's artistic and political circles and met the famous muralist Diego Riviera. In 1929, they married and together they traveled the world. Many of Frida's paintings were self-portraits. Her trademark impressive gaze drew viewers in and begged them to face tragedy and sadness as well as beauty. But her work wasn't always about herself. She had a revolutionary spirit and often incorporated her social and political opinions into her pieces. To communicate her strong passion for indigenous Mexicans, she embedded Aztec symbols into her paintings. Her distinctive wardrobe, too, reflected her identity. She chose the Tahuna style of dress not only for the long skirts but also because it represents female power. Frida showed Mexico as vibrant and beautiful and she both celebrated its heritage and captured the fears and struggles of its people. And that is amazing again. No matter what happened to her, tragedy after tragedy, she was able to rise above it and do what she loved and express herself in a way that maybe not everybody agreed with. And I think that's really beautiful. And we could all um, benefit from finding good ways to express ourselves. I really love this illustration right here. That dress is beautiful. And this is Catherine Dunham. She was born in 1909 and passed away in 2006. She was a choreographer and anthropologist in the United States of America. Despite a strict upbringing, Catherine was a creative and enterprising child. At the age of 12, she published a, sh a short story in W.E.B. Du Bois' monthly magazine, and at 14, she produced, directed, and starred in a performance to raise money for her church. Dancing, though, was her true love, and she studied modern dance and ballet in her childhood. Everything changed for her after she attended a lecture on Black culture at the University of Chicago. She learned that much of Black culture in America, the music, folklore, and dances, had all begun somewhere in Africa. Catherine wanted to find out how the roots of African culture had spread around the world, so she began, began studying anthropology, focusing on dances from the African diaspora. Throughout her career, she found a way to balance studying dance, teaching it, and actually performing it. In the 1930s, she formed a ballet negra, one of the first black ballet companies in the United States, and the Negro Dance Group, 
a school to teach young black dancers about their heritage. In 1935, she received a grant from the Rosewald, Rosenwald Fund and a prestigious Gunningham Fellowship to conduct an ethnographic study of dance in the Caribbean. She traveled to Jamaica, Martinique, and Trinidad, but truly connected with the culture in Haiti. After, Kath after Catherine returned to the United States, she funded the Dunham School of Dance and Theater. The dancers toured and performed and taught movement to artists, dancers, and actors. Her classes were extremely popular due to her unique methods. She combined traditional African and Caribbean movements with ballet and modern dance in an innovative way that was soon canonized as the Dunham Technique. It's still taught in dance classes today, and she's referred to as the matriarch of black dance. When you really love something and really connect with it, you find a way to make it your own, and people will really latch on to that. And like it said, people are still using her technique today, so that's really amazing. I just love how all these women did all these amazing things. It's so empowering. All of these accomplishments are truly incredible. They really are. The last person I'm going to read about today is Zaha Hadid. She was an architect from Iraq, England. At 11 years old, Zaha knew she wanted to design buildings. Her mother let her prove her skill by decorating some rooms in the house. It's safe to say that even as a child, Zaha had impeccable taste. Born in Baghdad, Iraq, Zaha studied math at the American University of Beirut in Lebanon before heading to London to study architecture. In architecture school, Zaha followed the rules her first few years, but her, for her final project, she let loose. She was inspired by the work of the Russian abstract painter Kazimir Malevik and re-envisioned one of his works as a three-dimensional building. By graduation, she had made a huge impact at the school with her imaginative designs and futuristic ideas. In 1979, she opened her own architecture firm in London. Zaha became known for her dynamic sculpture forms, often using curving shapes that swept through the space and flowed like water. Her bold, her bold approach to architecture brought her attention and won competitions. However, many of her designs were criticized as too avant-garde and impractical to ever get made. Sometimes it was she was called the paper architect because her designs rarely moved past the sketch phase, but soon the world caught on to Zaha's vision. Some of her notable buildings include the London Aquatic Center, designed for the 2012 Olympics, and the Maxi National Museum of 21st Century Arts in Rome, for which she received the... Pritzker Architecture Prize and became the first woman to receive the field's most prestigious award. She was made Dame Commander of the British Empire for con her contributions to architecture. At the time of her death, at the age of 65, she was considered one of the world's greatest architects. Her firm continues her vision without her, completing many of the projects she had in the works. Her elegant buildings stand as her lasting legacy to the world. And that is another amazing woman. We really have so many people to look up to and to inspire us. And I really hope that you guys are feeling inspired. Men too, because we all make the world a better place no matter what. Um, 
And so I really hope you enjoyed this. Maybe we'll read about a couple other women from this book because I really think it's amazing. Um, it really does inspire me. It makes me proud to be a woman and to just want to make my mark on the world like all these women were able to do. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Go ahead and give this a try and try to make some um, really beautiful art just using household items. It doesn't even have to be a person. You can make um, anything you want um, with really anything you have. So go out and have fun, do amazing things, know that I love and miss you, stay healthy, wash your hands, and get a great night's sleep. Bye guys!